I felt shock when I first saw this. It's not easy to shock people these days. The hour is getting late, everybody. We have blown through 900 subscribers, and I don't have much time, so we gotta finish this. It probably will be a short episode. Artist Journal, June 1st, 2023, broadcasting to the world from the ship in my mind in Berlin, Germany. My name is Adrian Pokebelli. And we have blown through 900 subscribers. If you can call 906, I'll take it. That sounds wonderful to me. We're getting ever closer, ever, ever closer to that 1,000 mark. Uh, but here we go. So thank you for all the support and everything along the way. It's been a really fun ride. We're getting close to a year here. So it's pretty exciting and interesting and just fun as always. And, you know... It's works like this. I mean, you know, parental discretion here is advised, but it like it's a shocking work, isn't it? And at first I didn't quite understand. I thought this painting here that is at the Sotheby's auction was actually at the auction. It is ambiguous. Of course, this is by Rat Cloak. The great Rat Cloak is back. It really feels like he's really gaining momentum here in the last couple of paintings after a lot of experimentation, going to the phone, doing a ton of stuff for the last year and a half. And he is coming back strong. And so there's a lot going on here. So again, the painting itself, it looks like it's at the auction, but there is an element of ambiguity. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that it's a painting, but it does remain a little bit ambiguous. When you first see it, you're like, what on earth is going on? It looks like a stage where something is happening. There is the figure here, perhaps a self-portrait, has a bit of a Jesus kind of look to it. The soldier stabbing Christ, the Christ-like figure, you know, the wound here. Uh, so kind of biblical echoes here. And the hangman here, as the Marshmallow Man, perhaps, with the Sotheby's cap. So perhaps a commentary on painting. I mean, there is so much going on here. And even the, uh, the apes themselves down here. So, and then this guy here. There is just so much going on. And lest we forget, I saw this and I was like, it looks like, I, I thought this painting was from the 60s, but I did a, a search on it. This is by, well, if this is the reference I have right, there's a famous painting called, I think it's called Black Square, and it's by Kaz Kazimir Malevich. So I guess that's Malevich. I think he was a Russian, uh, I think he was a Russian, uh, what would you call it? A, not supremacist. Uh, geom geometric abstraction. Uh, suprematism. He actually was. Malevich's rigorous, formal, and conceptual approach to painting was instrumental in establishing suprematism. So, and was he, he was Russian. So, I mean, it's hard not to, you know, I mean, Rat Cloak is in Ukraine, right? So you do wonder if there is a commentary here, uh, if it relates to current events or not. It's an interesting move. Let's put it that way as ever. And here, don't want to zoom in too much. I mean, kids watch this show sometimes. I encourage parents to watch it with their show. Look at how cool this is, though. Uh, but in art, you're going to get edgy things, okay? And, you know, in a sense, this is no edgier from a, uh, you know, uh, than you're going to see at the Alta Pinacoteca, which I was going to bring up the photos. Today, I didn't have time. Uh, but I will bring up some photos from that in Munich, Munchen, as the Germans say. And uh, so anyways, let's take a quick look here. Uh, but what I was going to say is this is no more shocking than a lot of what you see there. What was interesting, though, is on an instant, like on a uh, uh, instant, almost as I like to call it, almost on a reptilian uh, basis, though, I found it more shocking than anything I saw there. Because everything I saw there, I'd kind of seen before in one form or another or an echo of. This was new. And again, this makes me, I mean, this harsh image here. Again, this is like, this is stuff you can see in a major painting gallery. So, you know, in a sense, if you're going to take your kids there, you can uh, see this. And we won't dwell on it for too long here. 
Uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's it's this is what I was going to say is it makes me incredibly bullish on this scene here. I was thinking to myself, like, I can't think of an art scene in the entire world. And, you know, feel free to disagree and leave a comment and uh, help me out. I can't think of an art scene in the entire world that is this interesting. And I mean that in, in genuinely, and I, I just can't think of one, whether it's a contemporary art scene. I mean, I guess there's maybe not that many art scenes, but I just think, like, I can't remember the last time I was shocked by something. But when I saw this, I was like, what is going on here? This is shocking. This is insane, as one person put it. So, and the, you know, the commentary on the art world here combined, you know, so punning, visual punning, right? Because here you have the painting and we have the subtext of Ukraine and Russia potentially. And who knows, maybe not, perhaps. But you also have this commentary on the art world and I thought this work was called The Death of Painting in the back, but it's not. But I thought there was a work that was a black square that was called that, that came out in the 60s. This is not from the 60s. So I might be mixing up stuff here. But all to say, uh, what a stunner. And it, you know, it makes me incredibly, uh, just incredibly bullish on this scene. The amount of creativity, uh, the amount, it's just like the innovation the originality. Uh, and there's one other thing I wanted to point out, which is, so this is an auction. This is a painting of an auction. So Rat Cloak, uh, Cloaksy, Rat Cloaksy here is putting this at auction and put it for a, a one Tezos and the 24 hour auction. So also working from a conceptual, on a conceptual level, with the auction itself. There is another mirroring, another subtext, another narrative. So again, Rat Cloak comes back in style here, never went away, but, uh, you know, comes back with a new painting in top form here. So we haven't even looked at all these little figures here. Uh, beautifully rendered here too, with this guy. You know, just almost getting all the horror one might say, of uh, one of these auction people. And look at this, even the little spray. I mean, it always pays off to look at Rat Cloak up close, as you can see here. Like, I mean, look at all the detail in the eye, you know, in the shadow of the eye of this ape here and just in everything. Again, it's kind of like, it reminds me of, he's like kind of a Raphael of sorts of the digital art scene. Look at this. It's beautiful, isn't it? You know, so just powerful, kind of a World War I look. Anyway, I could spend a lot of time on that, and I don't have the time today. So welcome back, everybody. Thank you for coming back. Uh, and thank you, everybody, who showed up yesterday to the Twitter spaces. What new art tools are you using? It really picked up in the last half there with a whole bunch of art tools that people started suggesting as uh, Santiago came on and Ed Marola and all sorts of people. Mick Render, I think to me that was almost one of the big takeaways was this thing on 3D printing. And I think we're gonna, we are gonna do a space with Mick Renders. He said in about a month or so on 3D printing. And I'm very excited about that. So we have a couple of awesome guests before then. And then maybe we'll leave a week in there just for flexibility. Uh, we shall see. But anyways, thank you everybody for showing up. It was a very fun space as usual. Uh, and thank you again to RuneTune for co-hosting. Uh, just to kind of uh, uh, the the what came out of that discussion here was just a little bit more. We're discussing raw AI and you know Ed how he works here with raw AI. I believe we were talking about that yesterday. So here are some works by Ed Marola done in raw AI, which are quite beautiful, I might add. I mean, they kind of look sellable in and of themselves. Uh, these are gorgeous, these uh, AI works by Ed. And so he was mentioning how, and we're discussing tracing a little bit, and he was mentioning how he's tracing less and less, at least with the AI, and just simply using these works here as visual references. So here, raw AI versus my drawings. So using them and you know if you zoom in here maybe you can see 
Like here, you see this person on the moon, and then maybe, you know, so really using it as a conceptual, uh, you know, jump board of sorts as a launching launch pad, uh, but not worrying about, you know, just using it as an idea generator, and then it gets you started and not even worrying about tracing it, just going as a, you know, intellectual, you know, launch pad or launch board of sorts. Uh, so very interesting here. And also there was this, uh, just some, yeah, and we're also talking about different software. Carbs Code I've never heard of, but they do not support NFTs. Uh, and so Ed had posted that. Uh, I think it's, and what do you think about this? I think there's a ton of people that don't like NFTs for some reason. Uh, it can't be the environmental reason anymore. I think, you, I suspect it's probably just the sometimes NFT culture. It, I don't think it's too bad here, even though I love finance, but sometimes it gets to be all about, I got rich with some PFP. And uh, I think sometimes the general public kind of gets turned off by that. And this just this whole, it's almost takes speculation to a rank degree. But I, you know, I find it again, I think of uh, crypto as a, as a kind of psychedelic financial system, a noetic. Here is the word of the day, nous, uh, in Old Greek, I believe spelt N-O-O-S, and then slightly newer ancient Greek, it's N-O-U-S, and that means mind or intellect, a very important word in Platonism. So I consider crypto, based, you know, talk about tangents, I consider crypto basically a psychedelic financial system, a noetic uh, financial system. It, it exists in this digital world. It's a conceptual financial system of sorts. Anyways, let's not get too off track here because I simply do not have the time. Uh, so what do I think about uh, code people not supporting NFTs? Well, uh, that's the way of the world. You know, uh, it's kind of back to the come and get me sort of thing. Uh, but you know, every I guess everybody has to make their own decisions. Uh, he, he understands he can't stop users from doing so. I wouldn't worry about it. And maybe he'll come around, uh, this guy. So I think that's okay too. And this also from Mick Renders. Hey Ed, I noticed that creator site too. I, I'm not sure what Ben's brush added, but check out the video to make your own brushes and Ace Bright. I've been using this. So this also came up. So it's actually quite a useful episode there yesterday. Uh, Ed, a lot of alpha being shared. Art, artists, alpha for artists was being shared on yesterday's spaces. Speed up dithering painting and ace bright. So if you go to Ed's uh, uh, Twitter, you can find this link and that'll help you with just some sh shortcuts or just some uh, hacks on how to speed up dithering and ace bright, which is of course, pixel art software for those that don't know. Uh, just a couple of comments here. Uh, Runetune, the winter sanctuary work by Tooks from last episode is gorgeous. Something about it reminds me of a cross between Matisse the decorative quality of Matisse and the genre art of Peter Bruegel. Also, I totally missed that work by Wasteman Goldminovich, that very interesting fuzzy pixel work. Dang it, Memorial Day weekend. So Runetune was partying. He threw a party, as he mentioned on the spaces yesterday. So that would have been fun to attend. I guess the weather is great in New York. I was just talking to another friend who is there. Uh, and here, Retro Manny, long game is something we need to continually remind ourselves of. Easy to forget that we're knee deep in this space trying to achieve something of value to us and others. Big shout out to Retro Manny on that front. So anyways, thank you everybody for all the comments. Uh, also coming up tonight, or for me, actually 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So this afternoon, if you're in uh, the North America, uh, or this evening, if you're in Europe and otherwise, I'm not sure. AI surrealism, there's going to be a Twitter space. I am in the show. Uh, I need to actually put that work up pronto. Uh, join us tomorrow on Twitter space. So that is today. So that is tonight. So you can find that and I will retweet that right now. So come check us out. There's going to be a lot of people. It looks like a really big show. It's done with Super Chief. I didn't realize that. And they're doing, it's quite the big thing. I, so anyways, uh, interesting stuff. Here's the uh, poster. As you can see, 100 AI artists. It was the first, what I loved about this is I got asked to do a work and I hadn't, uh, I hadn't really made anything too serious with AI. So it forced me to really kind of get more serious about AI. And so it was the first kind of work I made that I was kind of happy with. So anyways, that'll be up here. 
uh, in this show. And uh, yeah, so I'll probably show that tomorrow. And so anyways, that is happening. J June 2nd to 8th, Super Chief Gallery, new uh, NFT Canvas World Trade Center. So that is exciting. Now, this was interesting. So I follow uh, Katya Kata, let me just get her name right here. Katya Kazakina is a famous uh, arts reporter. She might be like, she's one of the, I'd consider her top tier, uh, for lack of a better term, arts reporter. And oftentimes in her account, she'll post uh, some excerpts from her latest article. And I thought this was super interesting. So May 26th, what went wrong with Christie's Feinberg sale, the auction that nearly drove the art market to despair? Plenty. At first, people were stunned to see art by major names selling for a pittance, selling for not much money. Then they got excited. So the long story short, let's see if we can... Uh, I've covered many auctions during my career as a reporter. Most are a blur. A few are memorable. Uh... And here it is. The evening sale of the Gerald Feinberg collection was a textbook example of a reset happening in real time in the art market. In front of our very eyes, bidders seemed stunned into inaction as lot after lot sold on a bid or two at huge discounts compared to their pre-sale estimates. Richter, Krasner, de Kooning, Wool, Fontana, Lichtenstein, all at fire sale prices. Grotjan, Rosenquist, Bourgeois, Kippenberger, unsold. So this is very interesting. So uh, then by the following day, the shock gave way to excitement. Bargains, people began shopping for lower value artworks, filling up on deals like Walmart customers on Black Friday. But this is, so that's possible uh, that that's kind of how things worked out. And all of a sudden everybody saw a bargain and they went for it. But if you think of all the, the interest there is in keeping these prices high. So if you're some rich collector and you see this happening, uh, like, and you have a whole bunch of like Lichtensteins, let's say, and all of a sudden Lichtenstein is going down in some of these arts, there is an interest in these works getting bid up. It was sort of the thought, the alternative uh, interpretation that could be brought in here. Uh, that this wasn't simply people looking for bargains, but this was perhaps, and this is total speculation, maybe likely untrue, but perhaps there is a sort of, you know, trying to keep the market high. It was sort of what I was thinking to myself as I saw this, because uh, think of how much interest there is in keeping this thing high. So again, I think this is so interesting in, in, in relation to our rat cloak that we start, that I started the show here with. Because look at, you know, Rat Cloak puts out, like, I mean, and look at these artists. We've seen them all a million times, right? We've seen them a million times. And here all of a sudden Rat Cloak gives us something truly shocking. You know, I don't see shocking coming out of here. So I'm painting with a broad brush here, massive generalizations. But, you know, quite interesting what happened there just a couple, few days ago. Now, also... This is interesting. Popple puts out this work, right? Cool, very stylish pixel artwork. You know, look, just super classic Popple. You know, I keep reloading this page and it adds 20,000 views, 645,000 views. It was posted yesterday afternoon at three. We're not even 24 hours in. Like what happens if I reload? Is it going to be 671 views. So in the last like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, it's gotten another 25,000 views. So that's pretty interesting, isn't it? I mean, I'd say things are looking incredibly bullish on, on the digital art scene front here, like incredibly bullish, uh, while the traditional art scene is showing a bit of a hiccup. Just kind of interesting contrast, isn't it? I uh, Rosatio bringing back my old work from 2015 to life. Oh, cool. It's going to be put on foundation. I missed that. I was, just saw some old work by Rosatio and thought, you know, this is interesting because we've looked a lot at Rosatio's work and I love to just see the evolution of artists. So here back in 2015, doing some collage. I assume that's collage. It looks like collage. Rosatio works with collage. So here it is. Oh, and I guess here's more. Oh, you 
Now, is this four different works here? This is four different works. So here you go. So just interesting to see. So that's maybe that makes more sense as a composition. I thought it was kind of cool this way too. I thought it was, well, there's something original. Anyway, continuing on, rare. Uh, how are we doing here? A rare with a beautiful work that came out while I was in Munich, sold for 4.8 ETH. So basically that sounds like about $10,000 here. A little under, a pastiche of portrait of seated hunters with dogs by Jean Daré and Nicasius Baynards during the 17th century. An early hunting portrait as Daré painted the figure and Barnett's did the animals. Juxtaposing current technology into the past with our quadruped robots. So a traditional painting, unfortunately I don't have time to bring it up here, and putting in the uh, Boston Dynamics dogs here, are replacing likely the dogs in the original painting. So just a cool work by Rare, which sold for a ton. Now this was put on foundation, and this was part of a world that is called Tomorrow and Tomorrow, put together by Larson Warner. Now I've never heard of Larson Warner before, but so here's a show that they put together, and you can see there's Yuri J. Uh, Numenal, and you know various people, Oxi, Strano, Rare Force One, Shepperton. Look at this, physical exhibition with digital artworks at Larson Warner Stockholm, part one and part two. So we've been discussing how Foundation Worlds really is a, can just kind of replace the, is, it is a legitimate digital art gallery, it, it seems. And so this seems to be a real world example. And again, if we had more time, we'd look up Larson Warner, maybe we will in a future episode. Sabato, GM, I made a super rare work. So I guess, you know, and here's the thing, GM woke up feeling super ordinary, not super rare, today. So I think Sabato is kind of sad that he's not on super rare yet. I'm kind of sad that Sabato is not on super rare yet. I mean, I don't know if he's applied, but, you know, a lot of people have been giving the invite just over Twitter. So hopefully, yeah, I, I, it seems like, you know, as I put in a comment, long overdue, uh, for Sabato to be on Super Rare, but let's see. I mean, he's sold at Sotheby's, right? So, I mean, I think uh, that qualifies, but he might just need to apply, but I don't know. I, if anybody's watching that can do anything that feels, you know, I, I would jump on that. To, I'd love to, if you're Super Rare, I would think you'd be thrilled to have Sabato on your roster, right? Uh, Uxine, no rest. So interesting kind of deviation in the color from Uxine here, an interesting piece. I was trying to, I, at first I was like, is this like an iron lung or is this like a, almost like those dolls that one inside the other? I'm not sure what this is, but you have a computer here with some spikes or maybe it's one of those torture chambers. It looks like a torture chamber. You know what this is? I saw one in Prague last year. If I know what this is, this is horrific. More horror for us here today. This is a torture device where you put the person inside and then you roll it down a hill. So that is almost too awful here, Uxine. We have a lot of darkness in this episode and a skull. No rest. So showing, you know, it almost reminds me of the Adelia. A much darker take on that Adelia thing where it's just like digital exhaustion. Maybe Uxine is feeling digital exhaustion, but he is bringing in the cash. So that kind of makes things a little easier. So I don't think any of these have sold yet, just offers coming in. RJ, reality slips. So one of one by RJ on object. And it looks here like it's a painting or a work in a work in a work, but kind of pixelized as a transition here. And just a chair with a laptop on it, a very modern uh, you know, thing you would see. And so, but turned into a conceptual device here as it gets repeated through the screen. You know, this is a device that you'd often see on Golden Age comics. Again, if I had more time, I'd bring up like, you know, uh, kind of like a Walt Disney comics and stories from uh, the 40s. You'd see something like that. Uh, four color, four color comics. Uh, so here, just an uh, update on, so this is RJ, just a one of one on uh, object here. And you can see some of these other works that were minted, that 50 work series and more. 
Uh, here's a work by Working Class and Junkadelic. So Working Class did the uh, did the image, and then Junkadelic did the audio. So five tesos, edition of fifty five. It's pretty cool. Very cool. So that is happening. Weapon, good title. Uh, written and produced by Q Nikon, music produced by Junkaz, Lou, artwork by Working Class. So just a cool work here. Looks like Microsoft Paint, doesn't it? Uh, Audie Woody, who I haven't seen from for a little bit here. We need to save the world. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry. All we need is a cheeseburger. So more. So Audie Woody character as Ronald McDonald. And there have been a few McDonald's works. So I don't know if there's some sort of mean meme uh, celebration going on. Because uh, we saw The Myth and we saw others doing Ronald McDonald recently. Interesting fire in the background, too. I thought that was a nice touch. Uh, so interesting painting from Audie Woody. Gozo is back. I haven't seen Gozo for a long time. You might remember this work here. This came out September 30th. I'm pretty sure this was on the show. A beautiful surrealist work here. A gift by Gozo. So this just came out uh last week or may 25th so yeah like five or six days ago the weight so a new one in that series goes beautifully uh with the other one so just really kind of interesting powerful uh surrealist uh work here it's not quite abstract but it f feels like yeah i mean yeah just very surrealist you know again playing with these kind of sharp and maybe soft and this sort of thing. And then with the balance here, uh, really kind of unsettling work here. Again, feels very surrealist. So very cool work from Gozo. Available for 40 Tezos. So this sold out. Oh no, they're, they're 40 Tezos on primary. Not a small amount and they are selling. Uh, so, and here, a who's who here. Nicholas Sassoon and Kareem Safa, Somfe, Strano. So interesting. And let's just see here what this sold for. This sold for 30 back in September. Beautiful pieces. I mean, there is no doubt there. Dylan, Dylan D-I-L-A-N, walk. And a quote by Gustav Jung here. Kind of, who is that artist that this reminds me of? Kind of a modernist who would put shapes below. We also see that with Warhol right? This idea where you put an underpainting that is completely unrelated to the outline and how this creates instant poetry. And here it is, uh, some instant poetry, and it's quite beautiful to look at, beautifully drawn, nice bird here, cool ladder, 2023. So just a cool artwork here by Dylan, who, let me see if Dylan is new. No, looks like he does four pages of work. So a new discovery here. And there are other works here too. So very cool. Almost could hang with Flora Marquez there. Interesting kind of, again, kind of cut out paper sort of look. Continuing on, this was cool. Another work by Pixelar. Pixelar. Uh, so this was cool too. We saw another one the other day kind of combining pixelation with other stuff. Interesting contrast. So here it's like glitched out video. Here it's static. And then a big thing in the background. Just an interesting uh, and beautiful color here. Just kind of really, oh, and there's, there's volume. How weird is that? Almost like a factory. Very cool. Look at this, The Wheel of Samsara by, let's see if there's volume on that, there's not, by uh, Marcelo Pinello, Marcelo Pinell. And a gorgeous, gorgeous work here. Uh, so now playing with Eastern mysticism and just an insanely beautiful work here. So the excitement, again, like from, is totally over here uh, in terms of just the art uh, globally. Like, I don't know, like I, I look at this stuff and I just go, I mean, this is like me looking along, you know, one day and then here's a, a whole schwack of new works coming out of nowhere. Uh, I mean, it's pretty incredible. Here's another one by Marcelo Pinel. This is Gemini. He's doing the uh, the Zodiac, and so just another stunningly gorgeous work here. Uh, this is available for fifty nine ninety, uh, and this is part of the Zodiac Museum. And here's a 
beautiful work by Rennie Fish with a reserve of 0.6, and this was minted just on the 29th. So, let me bring that up to full volume. So, very cool. Almost playing with this embryonic sort of figures here. Uh, almost in an embryo of sorts, and just cool. And you see the circular pixels? And again, makes you wonder if this, you know, is Touch Designer something being used here? I need to use that software. Touch Designer was discussed yesterday as well. It sounds like there's kind of coding, but it's accessible to everybody. You don't necessarily need to be a coder to know how that works. Anyways, that's by Rinny Fish on Foundation. Here's one by Ed Marola, Maiden Friends. And for a nice reserve of 0.15 ETH is available. Kind of has almost a weird, like kind of reminds me of the nativity a little bit. Uh, and so here's almost like a Mary figure. Virgin Mary figure, and then a demon on a laptop, and all sorts of mayhem here. So just kind of classic, instantly recognizable Ed Marola work here. Interesting use of dots here too. So the experimentation continues, and no description, made in friends. Here's one by Francoise Gamma, and let's just look at this, another walking figure. So... Again, another cool variation. Kind of feels a little uh, glitchy, doesn't it? Like, uh, remember we were talking about combination yesterday. This seems to be taking, uh, kind of using analog video glitch. This is from 2009, however, uh, you know, with the walking figure. So Francoise Gamma has been working for at least 14 years with this walking figure. So there's something to be said for uh, just hitting a theme and just doing it for years and years. It will make you famous. Like I'm sure François Gamma, I mean, it kind of like, it's really well done, but when you have someone who's so instantly recognizable that that's a François Gamma, I mean, it, it does help in that respect. So I think we saw this perhaps on Twitter. This has been minted by Lorna Mills, a really cool, again, I love the nature works enormously. This is an edition of 32 for 15 Tezos, still available. There are 24 left. So just someone in a forest looking, you know, kind of going around and look at how much work this probably took. Again, with the marquee tool, this is not a small amount of work. So interesting animation. Haiti Rocket, hello world number one, back on object. And so kind of seeming to combine stuff here too, or it seems to be doesn't it seem like it's going beyond the Nintendo glitch ROM a little bit with right here? So that is kind of interesting. And right here, it looks like a glitch ROM. Something's going on here. It seems to be a new direction a little bit. An interesting pixelation in the middle. So hello world. And let's just see, sold for 13 Tezos on primary. And here's another super cool work by Haiti Rocket. Done again, was it Brilliance 2.0? Done on a Amiga 1200, beautiful color. Uh, so just kind of this dark greens and purples, original color, uh, and a really nice abstract here. So beautiful work by Haiti Rocket, Nova Warp. This is by Figments, also known as Cap'n, I believe. Uh, a is bigger than B, sleepless. So again, these kind of have a bit of a video game kind of feel to them, or at least old uh, monitor feel to them. Really cool series. Uh, and I love just how it's just taking an idea and running with it. Uh, let's just use this very basic rules and then let's see what we can make uh, with that. Nifty Monkey with a new piece, May 30th, edition of 30, already 64.99 on secondary pineapple. And so I guess we can see the flashing pineapple here. And I won't leave this on too long and kind of a, kind of a Pikachu cat or something. And Pineapple nutrition, nutrition facts, and let's just see. Sold for 42 Tezos, uh, edition of 30. So nice take home there, 1,200 Tezos for a nifty monkey. Tom, you know, not cheap. Tom Bombadil, The Harvest of Oranges. I thought this was a beautiful work by Tom Bombadil. Uh, just a really nice uh, composition. I think it's like the light and shadow of it that really uh, just drew me to it. It feels a little different than the other ones. And there's something like if you were to own like, let's say one boom battle piece, you could own this one and it would have its own kind of feel. Uh, so anyways, 1049 on secondary 
and sold out on primary for seven Tezos within like 15 minutes. Token Art Holdings has a few of them. <laughs> and so continuing on another work by Kappen, this on the regular account. And it feels like there's a little bit of, for lack of a better term, innovation in this dithering here. It feels a little different, this piece. It feels like he's experimenting a little bit. So that is interesting. Again, like this, there's something about it that feels a little different in this piece. Kind of another mystical work a little bit, Invocation, and more of this writing, which I'm seeing more and more. Cool work by Sad Girl. Just looking at the clock here. And nice piece. Interesting piece. Strange piece. I like how just there's this, you know, missing stuff that's kind of masked out. I like the white a lot. Uh, receptivity. Make, made me notice where the ocean is holding the sky. Card Captor Sakura available for 777. Two left on primary. Interesting piece. Again, kind of has that anime uh, thing and then just kind of glitched out. Here's Kramer, also known as uh, Random Girl 4K on Twitter. Just some. I thought this was a pretty interesting kind of minimal piece here in this kind of violet lake and this kind of interesting sky here. Uh, the lake might be poisonous, landscape 03, edition of 10, and that's already on secondary. That sold out for only 90 Tezo cents, so almost free there. Here's another one, and this one is also on secondary at 5 Tezo, sold for only 90 Tezo cents, landscape 04. So just kind of interesting work here, keeping very consistent, little houses up on the hill. And if you don't remember Kramer, that was the person who was doing these interesting kind of metallic almost Terminator 2 type uh, objects here. So there's kind of liquid metal objects and kind of weird digital pixelation. So pretty interesting work here from Kramer. Check this out. This is, uh, this is fake smile. Surprise. So crazy work by Fake Smile here. It's on foundation. I think the first work. Just show the start here too. Pretty intense. Chaos reigns. So before the neighbors burst, you know, take down my door and <laughs> quiet my computer. Uh, so anyways, cool work by Fake Smile. Big shout out to Fake Smile. I believe it's their first. Look at this. Srothabees by New Utopian Arts. So this looks like another New Utopian Arts. Interesting. So that looks like another uh, foundation world. Sky Goodman collaborating with his mom. Made me want to collaborate with my, with my mom. Shout out to mom if you're watching. Uh, Sky Goodman working on a series of landscapes that are a collaboration with my mom for the first time ever. We're using AI to blend her watercolor paintings with my blender scapes. So that is super cool and just really fun. So classic, I mean, instantly recognizable as Sky Goodman here too. And a cool uh, collaboration with Glitchtown Arcade. So that is super cool. And look at this, this is on object. I brought up the, uh, let me see if there's volume. There is no volume. I, I brought this up on Twitter just cause it loads a little easier, but very cool uh, work here. I love the color and just a cool collaboration. That one just really kind of worked out quite nicely. Uh, Lily Illo, I thought this was super interesting. So just a uh, GM, I love the dots here. The dots are so painterly in the, on this dress. And even you see like, it's almost like the dots are the theme here. So continuing to push the whole theme, but very in, in an interesting direction with the dots here and a great background. So it continues to evolve with Lily Illo, big shout out. Let's give that a retweet, beautiful work. And Matias La Plata with a physical work, which I thought was quite beautiful too. This is just a GN, look at this. Look at how great of a, you know, illustrator, drawer, draftsman that Matias La Plata is. So a beautiful M here 
Uh, just really nicely done. And that, my friends, is your show. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, take care. <laughs> <laughs>